Hi, I'm Melissa Bantug here in the Johns Hopkins Breast Cancer Program. Today I'm joined with Dina Lancey, who's a clinical trial specialist focusing on minority recruitment. Dina, it's great to have you. Thank you for having me. Can you tell me a little bit about why clinical trials are so important, specifically for minorities to participate in? Sure. Clinical trials are important for all cancer patients to participate in, but specifically for minority patients it's important because there's a disparity or a difference in how often certain cancers occur in minority communities, how it affects them, meaning do they um, survive those cancers, um, how they um, tolerate certain treatments. So with that, it is important that they're involved when we're developing new treatments so that we can find out how those treatments affect them side effect wise, um, does it increase their survival, um, and just how those new treatments and therapies behave with uh, different populations. Can you talk a little bit about the types of clinical trials that are available to patients? The ones that I think people think of first and foremost are treatment trials mm -hmm. where drugs are involved. Um, and, and those are treatment trials that can involve a drug or that is new, um, a new treatment, uh, a treatment that exists already but has not been used in a particular cancer, um, or the combination of existing and new treatments, new techniques in surgery or radiation. Uh, but beyond that, there are prevention studies that look to find out in well folks, um, healthy people that don't have cancers or may be at uh, greater risk than the regular population for developing certain cancers, or in those that have had cancer, how we can prevent those cancers from coming back or having them um, experience a new cancer. There are also screening trials, um, which we would uh, find cancers earlier, and that increases survival and the effectiveness of treatment and quality of life mm -hmm. trials. Those trials are important for people that are being treated for cancers. We, in those studies, would look at side effects. Can we manage your nausea or vomiting better, mm -hmm. your pain better? Mm -hmm. um, it can also include family members, which in that case, we would look at caregivers and what experience do they have during the course of treatment. Should a patient who might be interested in participating in a clinical trial be concerned that, about his or her safety? I think that it's a natural concern, um, but I think they shouldn't worry about their safety in terms of um, the trial itself because there's so many people watching in, in, in a sense. Um, a study or a clinical trial goes through multiple steps before it's approved. Mm -hmm. um, there is a board, an internal review board, mm -hmm. an IRB. Um, that looks at each study, and that board is made up by scientists and clinicians, doctors, nurses, community members, mm -hmm. who all look at um, studies before we're allowed to enroll patients in those studies. So people are protected in a sense that it's not just a single researcher deciding mm -hmm. to um, test a new treatment um, and enroll people into a clinical trial. So it sounds like there are lots of people that are making sure that patients stay safe. There are, um, from the, the direct clinical team that a patient would see and lots of people that are behind the scenes that would have reviewed uh, a clinical trial and decided that it's important, mm -hmm. it's as safe as it can be, um, and that it's okay to enroll. Are there other barriers to participating in a clinical trial beyond safety concerns? I think there are, and there are some that are considered on the patient side, mm -hmm. some that are internal to us mm -hmm. in, within an institution, but some of them are the demands of a trial itself. Do you have to come multiple times? Is this an inconvenience for you and your family? Can you work mm -hmm. uh, when you are on this study? Um, knowledge barriers. Mm -hmm. um, what, do, what do you know about clinical trials? Um, your understanding of your disease, um, trust and fear of sure medicine in general and then more specifically of clinical research because there is an unknown mm -hmm. there. As safe as it is to participate, there are things we don't know because those studies are um, set up to answer questions for us. Now, is cost and ever a barrier or is insurance something that would usually pay for part of participation in a clinical trial? I think it's a, a, it is a, a barrier that I didn't list. It is certainly a consideration. and. It, in standard of care, it's always a concern as well. Sure. Um, but I think individually, patients considering clinical trials should um, take a look and get help from their physician and the financial team at the institution with um, their specific insurance. Mm -hmm. But in general, um, anything that's considered standard to treatment of your care, mm -hmm. the doctor visits, the how your cancer would be monitored, mm -hmm. are all generally covered. The things that um, research covers would be the drug that's under study, 
um, if there are additional tests that are being done, blood tests or mm -hmm. scans to evaluate the drug and the response that your disease has to the drug are typically research um, tests, so they are covered by the study. And so there would be no cost to the patient if it was covered by the research study? Those pieces of that sure. treatment would be right at no cost to the patient. Um, doctor visits that you would have anyway mm -hmm. would be uh, sure. covered by the insurance or sure. um, the responsibility of the patient. Will a patient have the ability to see his or her own doctors while participating in a clinical trial or will they work specifically with the research team? Absolutely and it's it's typically best that mm -hmm. they do. Um, you know if you think about the research team in terms of being the visitors on the team really. There is a consistent clinical team that would be generally with the patient from diagnosis and through whether or not they do a standard treatment mm -hmm. um, into a clinical trial treatment and they know the patient best. The patient is often most comfortable with that um, treatment team, the nurse and the physician. That team is typically the one that discusses a clinical trial initially and helps the patient make the decision. Um, and they are an important part throughout the care, even on a clinical trial, and monitoring the um, progress and the effects of the clinical trial treatment. So you don't give up your regular oncology team to um, join a clinical trial. Does the patient have the ability to stop a clinical trial at any point in time if it's not working for him or her? Absolutely, they can stop at any time. I think from the moment that a clinical trial is uh, considered, I mean, you are not locked in that just because you asked that you are showing some interest and commitment to doing it. And even if you say you'd like to do it, if at some point it's not right for you anymore, the schedule is too demanding, or the side effects of the drug are inconvenient for you, or they don't match with the quality of life that you expect to have, mm -hmm. you can say that you'd like to stop. And that will in no way impact the care that you receive after that. Right. You'll work with your regular oncologist to decide what the next step should be and what the next treatment should be. And finally, one last question. If someone wants to find out more about clinical trials, where would be a good place to learn? I think the first step would be to talk to your medical oncologist. Mm -hmm. They are a wealth of knowledge and not only in what's taking place at your hospital and with their team, but also across the country and, and close to um, that hospital, there's al always a network. Mm -hmm. But in speaking to that network, there are two national sites that I think are good places to look. Uh, clinicaltrials.gov mm -hmm. is a place that will allow you to search clinical trials near and far. Um, it gives some information about the trial and tells you who's running that trial and um, how you can contact that team. In addition, cancer.gov will also let you search clinical trials, but it is a great resource for um, understanding clinical trials, expanding on some of the things that we've discussed, um, and also giving some disease-specific information. Wow, this has been wonderful. I feel like I've learned so much. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us.